Born in 1491, Inigo Lopez de Oñaz y Loyola, also known as San Ignatius, was the son of a Basque nobleman. He became a popular soldier who was fond of women and gambling. He experienced the typical upbringing of a rich man's son, in other words, the luxurious life. In 1522, he fought in the army of Charles V. While defending Papalona, he was hit by a cannonball which shattered his leg. While recovering from this injury, he suffered from depression, believing that his life seemed purposeless. As a result, he began reading about the life of Christ and the saints. One day, Ignatius had a vision where he saw the Virgin Mary and baby Jesus. He then went to the shrine of Our Lady at Montserrat in Aragon and became a hermit, living in a cave near Mantua in 1522. He spent his time wearing rags, confessing, and scourging himself, while also helping the sick and needy. Loyola threw himself at the mercy of God. He found salvation in mystical experiences and completely committed to the Catholic Church and its faith. In 1523, Ignatius went on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem as he wished to communicate his love and knowledge to others. He also intended to go on a mission to visit the Turks, but he was sent back to Italy by the Franciscans. He spent the next seven years learning theology and Latin in Barcelona, Alcara, and Salamanca. After this, he attended the University of Paris. While at the University of Paris, Ignatius roomed with Peter Faber, a young man from Savoy in the south of France, and Francis Xavier, a nobleman from the eastern end of the Basque Country. Gradually, a whole circle of friends in the Lord, as they called themselves, formed around Ignatius. What bonded them closely together was the fact that each of them were led through spiritual exercises a series of mental exercises that concentrate on sin, conscience, and the life of Christ, directing the mind to complete union with Him. Outlining the correct posture for meditation, these exercises toughened the mind for the work that was to follow. St. Ignatius placed high value on meditation. The circle also swore to an oath of poverty, chastity, and obedience to the Pope. Most were guided by Ignatius himself. In a deep sense, they all became companions of Jesus and of one another. Ignatius also shared with them his dream of going on a mission to the Holy Land, yet this time he was a bit wiser and more practical. If the Holy Land dream fell through, they would go to Rome and put themselves at the disposition of the Pope to explain where their greatest needs were. Because of the war between Venice and the Turks, no ship sailed for a year. Ignatius and his companions went to Rome, where they entered into an extended period of communal discernment. They were about to be sent all over Europe and all over the world. Spread out like that, how would they secure their bond among them? Their decision was to form themselves into a religious order. They called it the company, meaning the companionship or society of Jesus. And throughout, they were nicknamed the Jesuits. The Society of Jesus was approved by Pope Paul III in 1540 and thus became an official Catholic religious order. Ignatius was elected their first leader, who at first felt unworthy for, of the position because of the vanity and licentiousness of his earlier life, and because he felt that others were more theologically knowledgeable. After much discernment, he accepted the position and served until his death 16 years later. As the superior general, he sent companions all over Europe and around the world. He counseled them to serve without hard words or contempt for people's errors. In addition to writing the constitutions of the fledging order, he wrote nearly 7,000 letters. He wrote to high and low in church and state and to women as well as men. But most of these letters were to his Jesuit companions, thus forming a vast communication network of friendship, love, and care. At the time of his death, there were 1,000 Jesuits, a good number of them involved in the 35 schools that had been founded. 25 years later, that number of schools rose to 144, and another 35 years after that, it approached 400. In contrast to the ambitions of his early days, the mature Ignatius believed that we ought to desire and choose only that which is more conducive to the end for which we are created, to praise, reverence, and serve God through serving other human beings. It is quite evident that St. Ignatius and the Jesuits led the life of true Catholics. <music>